Can you extend that to matter? Well, in what medium would matter exist if we've done away with time and space? <laughs> How could something with dimensions appear in that which has no dimensions? Only in the objective world. Objects is matter. What objective world? There is no objective world. Have you ever experienced an objective world? Have you ever experienced a world outside consciousness? Okay. Should, should point now to the objective world, the world outside consciousness. Just, just show us anything that appears outside consciousness in your experience. If, if you look up in Wikipedia the definition of the word matter, it's, I paraphrase, it says basically that which exists outside consciousness. But where is that place? Can you now go with your attention, try with your attention now to leave consciousness, to leave the field of consciousness in which your experience appears. Try to encounter something outside consciousness. I mean, if you had a, a, a vision of God, would that vision appear in consciousness or outside consciousness? Or if you had a near-death experience, or uh, if you remembered a past life, would that experience appear in consciousness or outside consciousness? Or the taste of tea, or the sight of this room, or, or a migraine, or a depression? Would any of these experiences appear outside consciousness? Would it be possible to have an experience outside consciousness? How do we know there is a place called outside consciousness? We don't. We used to think the earth was flat. We used to think the sun goes around the earth. And now most people think there is a place outside consciousness. Sooner or later, our culture will just catch up with just the ordinary facts of experience. The earth is not flat. The sun doesn't go around the earth. And there's nothing outside consciousness. You know, people were, when they first heard, whenever it was, uh, what was it, two and a half thousand years ago, that the earth was was not flat, that it was round. People were outraged by it. People were incensed by it. They thought the, 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 the people that originally suggested that the earth might not be flat, they thought they were crazy. It took centuries between the first suggestion that the earth was not flat before it was fully... It, it, took, it took millennia, actually. It took into well into the 20th century but, but before everyone agreed that the earth was not flat. And likewise, the Copernican revolution, when it was first suggested that the sun didn't go around the earth, most people met that idea with disbelief. They were ridiculed, the people that first suggested it. Again, it took centuries for that idea to become mainstream. Nowadays, the people like me and numerous others that suggest that there's nothing outside consciousness and that consciousness is the sole reality of all existing things. We're not in circles like this, but in, in, in you know, intelligent scientific circles, we are ridiculed, just dismissed. In spite of the fact that, that this proposition, is, is, it, it stands the scrutiny of reason and it stands the scrutiny of experience. So the only reality is consciousness and our experience. The only no reality idea. is consciousness. It's very easy to check that in your experience. No, I... I uh, have you ever known, or could you ever know, or has anybody ever known anything other than knowing? It would only be necessary to imagine a material other than knowing if the idea that there is only knowing could not explain our experience. Mm -hmm. If there was something in our experience that could not be explained by the theory there is only consciousness, then there would be good reason for inventing another substance outside consciousness to account for that element of our experience that couldn't be explained by the consciousness only model. But there is nothing in our experience that can't be explained by the consciousness-only model. Strangely, there are many things in our experience that cannot be explained by the matter-only model. <laughs> yes. And yes. strangely, that is not 
considered so that fact is not considered sufficient for most people to doubt it so they tend to dismiss everything that cannot be explained by the matter model they just ex dismiss it as coincidence or fantasy I found the meditation this morning and I've done it on YouTube with you followed and it was extremely would turn my world upside down and I wasn't sure so I, I did it once or twice before I got here and then this morning but it takes like an hour or 45 minutes or something to go through that and I, I wondered if it just a way I mean it just kind of blows my mind that I look at these hard chairs along the wall and seeing it, that it's not, they're not really, you know, it's not material the way I normally thought everything was. Is it, is it matter? It's, it seems like it would be valuable if I could think, do something more or less daily or throughout the day or on a regular basis to break away, to chip at that conditioning that automatically sees things, is there, would you have any suggestion? No, 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 leave the conditioning. Don't chip away at the conditioning. Just see the reality. And that, that clear seeing will dissolve the conditioning from the inside out. We don't chip away. We don't chip away at the conditioning in order to... You just go straight to reality. That's how we started today. You go straight to knowing. That's all that is ever known. Have you ever known anything other than the knowing of your experience? No. Well, there you are. Just go straight there and then allow that understanding to, from the inside out, to percolate through, not just the way you think, not just the way you feel, but the way you sense the body and the way you perceive the world. So that here there's no... This is not a way of violence. It's not a way of... Uh, chipping away at, 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 or destroying or getting rid of uh, uh, our conditioning. We don't, don't pay any attention to the conditioning. Pay attention to reality. Stay with reality. Why would you want to stay with anything that was not real? So go to reality. Stay there and let that infiltrate all your experience gradually from the inside. I'm asking you, in your experience now, is it clear to you that all that is being known is knowing? Are you now knowing anything other than knowing? No. I'm not knowing anything other than knowing. Okay. Ask yourself at any moment of experience, am I knowing anything other than knowing? So the, the first thing to know in any experience is that you are knowing only knowing. Let that be your, your, your primary knowledge and the background of any subsequent knowledge you may have about what you are seeing. So it's fine to conceptualize tables and chairs and peoples and objects and time and space. All of that is fine, if necessary. But make sure that it takes place against the background of and is informed by the fact that in reality all that there is is knowing. When my eyes are closed, there seems to be a level of certainty that uh, sounds that I experience, sensations, or anything that I can perceive is, there's a certainty that, yes, that's coming from awareness. It's arising from going back into awareness. But then when I open my eyes, all of a sudden it, that, that level of certainty isn't there. And that level of, or that perfume of peace that I have when my eyes are closed, it, seems to not dissipate completely, but become dissipated a little bit. And so what I've been working with, especially after this morning's meditation, talking about assimilating the world as consciousness, it is consciousness, it is awareness. And I really like the feeling imagination of 
when I look out into the world, what is it that, is, is it an object? Is it, am I just believing that this is a, a material substance? And so I've been working with that and trying to apply that and seeing that there's no, no real difference in when I'm seeing something as when my eyes are closed and I'm perceiving a sensation in terms of it has a, I'm not, I'm not easy, easily as fooled. So I've been working with that, but I was wondering if it's just a matter of coming back to that understanding that makes it more concrete in terms of not being fooled that this is a material world full of matter when I open my eyes. Yeah. You know? Yes, yes, okay. I sense in your question that you are expecting the appearance of the world to change as a result of this understanding. It's not the appearance of the world that changes. The world has to appear as something other than ourself. The world, that is the finite object, can only be known from the perspective of a finite subject. That's what we are, perspectives, points of view in consciousness. From this point of view, it is inevitable the object will appear separate from the subject. If they were the same, they wouldn't be two things. They wouldn't be subject and object. There has to be a distinction between the subject and the object. In other words, for there to be creation or manifestation, there has to be a distinction between the subject that knows and the object that is known. And the only way it is possible for manifestation to be known is from the point of view, from a limited point of view. That's what we are, limited points of view localizations in the infinite mind of consciousness through which or from the point of view of which consciousness sees the inside of its own mind as the outside world but it will always appear from this point of view as an outside world mind on the inside matter on the outside these two mind and matter subject and object always arise together so don't expect the world to suddenly magically cease appearing as a multiplicity and diversity of objects made out of something other than your own mind, in other words, made out of stuff called matter. The, it's not the appearance that changes, it's the understanding that changes. And that's what I was thinking about, is it, is, am I just, because I can understand that when I think about, when I open my eyes and I see that there's you know, space between two bodies. That's not necessarily a limit, it's, an, it's more of a limitation of the organs of perception. Exactly. Rather yeah. than consciousness, it, me. Yes, I, imagine that you're having a dream of, of, of a Caribbean beach. You've localized yourself on the Caribbean beach and you're, you're, you're viewing the beach from the point of view of that person on the beach. You're, you're on your deck chair sunbathing and you see the, the sand and the sea from the perspective of someone on the deck chair. Yes. And now, while the dream continues, you wake up. In other words, you start lucid dreaming. The dream continues, but you now know that you are dreaming. You still see the Caribbean beach from the perspective of the the man on the deck chair, but you now simultaneously know that the entire dreamed world, both the Caribbean beach and the person who knows it, are a manifestation of your own indivisible mind. In other words, you understand that from the point of view of the person on the beach, there are two things, mind and matter, subject and object. But the apparent subject and object, or the apparent distinction between the finite mind and matter, is not really real. They are both a manifestation of your own indivisible mind. So it's like that. So here we start lucid waking. We don't cease seeing the world from a located point of view, but we now have this deep not only this deep understanding, but this deep feeling understanding that 
the mind that we seem to be on the inside, or the, the self that we seem to be on the inside made of mind, and the world that we perceive on the outside made of, atta, made of matter, are uh, the manifestation of a single indivisible consciousness, and that we are that. But that doesn't prevent us perceiving the world from this located point of view. It's not maya that goes, it's ignorance that goes. The illusion remains, the ignorance disappears. And with this understanding, the illusion of the world loses its power to veil its reality. It's this beautiful thing that the Zen Master Huang Po said, people ignore the reality of the illusory world. Remember, illusion, an illusion is not something that doesn't exist. It's, it is something that does exist, but is not what it appears to be. Or well, this, as a multiplicity and diversity of objects made out of matter, is an illusion. But it has a reality to it. There is something real about this, whatever it is. And if we touch that reality, we find only consciousness, or consciousness finds only itself. And I feel as though my, my relationship with my relationship with the world has changed in the sense that it feels more celebratory. Exactly. You, you, exactly. Our relationship with the world does change. Our relationship with people, animals and things change. Because previously we thought that people, animals and things were separate from ourselves. And this, was the, this is the primary assumption upon which almost all our thoughts and feelings and our subsequent activities and relationships are based. When that primary assumption is undermined, when we realize, no, what I am on the inside and what it is on the outside are the same, our thoughts and feelings and in time our activities and relationships gradually begin to realign themselves with this new understanding. What is the nature of yourself in between two thoughts or perceptions? The only thing I can find is... Do you cease to exist when a thought ceases to... when a thought vanishes? It seems like it's always replaced by another thought, sensation... But there or... must be a gap between the two thoughts. If there were no gap between the two thoughts, it would be experienced as a single thought. Yes. It's experienced as two thoughts or two perceptions because there is a gap between them. Now, what is your experience in that gap? Well, if it's between two thoughts, then it usually is a perception. And a between feeling. two perceptions. It in other words, to always be evolving and becoming something new. But would you agree that all your thoughts and let's just call it thoughts and perceptions so we don't have to give a right. long okay. list each time? Uh, uh, would you agree that all your thoughts and perceptions are intermittent? They come and go? Yes, absolutely, yeah. But do you not experience, but is your, not your experience one continuous flow? Yes, it feels You like don't experience a, your experience is not fragmentary. It's just a, a, a seamless flow throughout your whole day. Yes. Now, where does the continuity of your experience come from? given that all thoughts and perceptions are discontinuous or intermittent, what is it that gives experience its continuity? There must be something that is continuous in experience. It, yeah, it, it feels like it's experience itself that's continuous. Okay, but what is the nature of experience itself in the absence of thoughts and perceptions? There must be a continual. There must be a, a continuous element in experience right. itself. 
to me, it, it feels like awareness is something that's completely free and just sort of morphs into different shapes of sensations and perceptions and thoughts and experiences. It's just constantly morphing. And You're absolutely right. right. All there is to experience is the knowing of it, the awareness of it. So the, the, the only substance present in experience is awareness or, or knowing. And that knowing is continually morphing itself into thinking, feeling, perceiving. Right. That's what but it thinking, says. feeling, and perceiving are not essential to it. Right. And as you rightly say, it is awareness itself that is morphing into all the forms of experience, but is not itself limited to or defined by any particular experience. And could awareness exist without an experience? Doesn't Absolutely. In just the same way that the, ex the screen can exist without a movie. So but then wouldn't you be experiencing the lack of experience? And therefore you're experiencing No, because the, the, because the, the lack of experience, you, you would never have the experience, I am experiencing the lack of experience. Well, mm -hmm. if you did have that feeling, if there was a feeling of lack, that lack would itself be an experience. Right. In the end, it doesn't really matter whether awareness can exist in the absence of objective experience, because all there is to experience is awareness. As such, experience is a coloring of awareness, yeah. a movement of awareness, or the activity of awareness. So, in fact, in experience, that there is never anything present other than awareness or knowing itself. Do you expect it to appear in the same way that all other experiences appear? And because it never appears as even a very subtle object of experience, the mind, which can only know objective experience, says there's no such thing as awareness without objects. Mind cannot conceive of what awareness without objects would look like because the mind which is limited superimposes its own limitations on everything that it conceives or perceives and sees everything in accordance with and as a reflection of those limitations. The mind cannot think about awareness without objects. Although it is made of awareness, it cannot think of awareness. Not only can the mind not think of awareness without objects, the mind cannot think of awareness, period. T try now to think of something that doesn't have any objective features. The blank space is, is a very subtle object. It, it is the, the subtlest of all objects, which is exactly precisely why uh, the traditions tend to use space, as indeed I did this morning, as a, a, a metaphor for awareness, because it gives the mind something to visualize. What I, what I should have done, or rather could have done this morning, is uh, having, having suggested a, a space or a field, an, an aware field in which experience arises, in order to give the mind uh, uh, some, some, some reference, something to imagine. Uh, I could have removed the space-like quality from this presence. So, first of all, imagine physical space. Not just the physical space of this room, but imagine the vast physical space of the universe and add the quality of knowing or awareness to it. So, imagine now that the physical space in the universe is, is an aware physical space and that it is this aware space that is knowing everything that takes place within the space. But now, having added awareness to physical space, now remove physical space. What are you left with? Just the, just the awareness aspect. But having removed physical space, it has no dimensions. Because you've removed space. But you can't think of that. I can't think of it. So that is why if we want to visualize 
and speak of these things, we have to attribute these very subtle qualities to awareness, like emptiness or void or space-like or all these, none of these words are accurate, but they're all just concessions to the mind that wants to think about or visualize reality. And they are stepping stones for the mind before the mind finally dissolves in its source. <laughs>